Welcome to our program on dragons and knights. So of course I'm going to tell you a little bit about being a knight and this is our friend dragon here and then Miss Kristen is going to show you how to make your own coat of arms but if you don't know what that is I'm going to tell you a little bit more in this book called Imagine You're a Knight. And then I'm not going to read it all because I want you guys to reserve this book and get a copy so that you can learn all the things it takes to become a knight. Can you guys think of stories that have knights or dragons in them? How about there was a dragon, I think, in uh, Sleeping Beauty. Do you remember the dragon in Sleeping Beauty? All right. So with me today, I have a few things that a knight might use. This is a sword here and a little pouch. And you know Miss Kristen at Northwest Library and she's really quiet and she does really good story times? This is her sword. So just be aware of that. Quiet, meek Kristen has a sword, okay? And then this here is our pet dragon that we sometimes bring out for story time. Okay, so this is Imagine You're a Knight by Lady McGaver. Okay. Okay. What is a knight? Definition, someone who is awarded special honors for bravery, chivalry, and good deeds. I think some of you could be knights already with just those three things. Okay. When fully dressed from head to toe, a knight could be wearing as many as 20 pieces of steel plate armor, as well as a chain mail underneath, a plumed helmet, spurs, a sword, spear, and a shield. Hey, Miss Kristen, could you come and unsheath your sword and show everybody your sword? You ready? <gasps> Look at that. So knights carry swords. So imagine if you were riding a horse in a battle and you had all that stuff on you and you fell off your horse. Do you think you could get back up again? I think it'd be really hard to do that. All right, so Miss Kristen's going to show you how to make one of these and it's called uh, a coat of arms. And the coat of arms includes protect the weak, can you do that? Protect the weak. Can you fight for wrong? Can you be loyal to your friends? Seek justice. Be true, gentle, faithful, and brave. And rescue damsels in distress. Do you think you can do all of those things? Then maybe you can be a knight too. Knights, so what do knights do? Knights spend their times on quest tasks and thrilling adventures, rescuing people in trouble. Oh, and let's talk about dragons for a second. Here's our lovely friend, Dragon. There's always a downside to every job, and for a knight, there's the real risk of coming across a dragon. Dragons like eating knights, even the armor, so they are very, very dangerous. They live far away in, a mount in mountain caves and breathe fire. Killing a dragon is not a popular pastime with knights. On the other hand, if a knight avoids being eaten by a dragon, he may win the hand of a new wife. So, when you're thinking about if you want to become a knight, here are some things that you should do. You should um, amaze all your friends and family by practicing some of the courtly languages used by knights, and you can make up your own. You can design your own coat of arms. Hmm, I think that's coming up shortly. You can make up your own motto, and you can draw a dragon. Okay, now there are some other things that you can do in this book if you want to become a knight. And all you have to do is call the library or go online uh, and we can reserve a copy of this for you to check out. Now Miss Kristen is going to show you how to make your own coat of arms. Okay. 
right? Like this one here. Hi everybody. We're gonna do our coat of arms. And if you came to the library and you've got the fairy tale challenge, Knight in the Dragon bag that has all your stuff in there. So in the bag, we're well, gonna turn this around because we're gonna, get, we're gonna use that there as our template there. So in the bag for your fairy tale challenge, you get your instructions. It shows you how to do that right here. And you get a bag of goodies. Does anybody know why you would need a shield or a coat of arms? What if you were dressed for a battle in armor and you had something over your face and all over your body? How would you know who your friends were? Because you needed a coat of arms. So that's why they started decorating shields that have their coat of arms on there. So this is called your field. This is the dragon here, and this would have might might have been your symbol that was called your charge. So that might have been represented your uh, your family or your house. So put that on there. That usually goes in the middle, and even the green colors might have meant something. Maybe that meant royalty or bravery. different on this one in this bag I'll show you a sample you may have covered half of your um, your field up and put all your decorations on this side and there were squares in the other ones you might have had a stripe that you put through it you have different stickers that go in there You might have put things on there that maybe you have four people in your family. So you put four dots there. And you can hang this up in your room. There's one I did. And here's the other one I did. That's pretty simple. And that is your coat of arms. Hey everybody, it's Miss Audrey from the library in downtown Lancaster, and I am here to talk you through how to make the catapults out of your, from the materials in your grab and go bags. So in your bags, you've got five little weenie craft sticks. You've got two bigger craft sticks that are a pretty color. You've got seven rubber bands, and you will need all the rubber bands, so try not to stack them. You will have a spoon, and you will have a pom-pom ball. So catapults are basically levers and to make a lever you need something to act as your fulcrum or the thing that goes in the middle and you need some kind of plank or something to rest on top of the fulcrum. So you're gonna start with your five little teeny tiny craft sticks and you're just gonna make a stack just like that. And you need two of your rubber bands, one for each end. And if you've ever done hair, uh, you are at an advantage, basically. Um, your hair or anybody else's hair. So how you wrap your rubber bands, you loop it, you twist it, you loop it, you twist it. And once you get into the groove, it goes pretty quick. You're going to be doing a lot of looping and twisting. So one side and now you repeat on the other side. Ta-da! Ta-da too soon. Okay now, ta-da! So that will be our fulcrum. We'll come back to that in a minute. So now we need the lever. 
And for that, you need your spoon and one of your craft sticks. You're going to lay the spoon on top of the craft stick and now you need to secure it with another couple of rubber bands. I like to start at this end first. I feel like it's a little easier. And you just loop it around like we were just doing before. You'll be a pro at looping by the time this is done. And you can always scooch the rubber bands up or down to adjust them how you like. So now that we've done it on the bottom, we will do it at the top. So that spoon will not be going anywhere. You can tell I've had very long hair in my life with all this rubber band practice I've had. Whoop. All right, so it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be secure. Ta-da. So now you take your other big craft stick and you lay it like this. You want the bowl of the spoon to be facing up. This is going to be the base of your catapult. So you're gonna lay it there. And now as close to the tip as you can get it without it falling off, you are going to use yet another rubber band. This is one of my favorite easy things to whip together. Hours of fun with catapults. Okay, so we have our, our the top of our lever, we have the bottom of our lever. Now it's time for our fulcrum and you're gonna squinch it right down the middle there. Try to get it down there without snapping either of the craft sticks so it'll look like that. Now you need it to stay in place. This is the tricky part. You're gonna hold it and now you're going to go crosswise with your rubber bands. Ooh, trying to do it upside down so you can see what I'm doing. So over the tip and one side of the craft stick. There you go. It doesn't have to be super, super tight. It just has to be snug enough that it'll hold it in shape. And now we need to do it crosswise the other way. We're making a big X out of the two rubber bands. And again, it doesn't have to be super, super snug. If you feel like your rubber band might break, then it's probably good. Et voila. We have a catapult. So there's absolutely no point in making a catapult without having something for the catapult to throw. That's where your little pom-pom comes in. And if you're going to throw your little pom-pom, you need something to throw it at. So I just grabbed some cups. Feel free to make any kind of target that you choose. Practice aiming. Uh -oh. You wanna hold it at that end and shoot. Well, that was way off. But you can adjust your aim as you go. You can also experiment with your catapult. I have the fulcrum way down here towards the base. You can experiment and see what would happen if you put the fulcrum farther back. Will it still shoot as high? Can you make it shoot farther? You can also, with parental permission or grown-up permission, uh, maybe try launching a little ball of tin foil, ball of paper. I wouldn't recommend using anything heavy because conking somebody in the head with a catapult uh, is a pretty good way to get into trouble pretty surefire way to make someone cranky with you. Breaking things is also ill-advised. But with lighter things like tin foil and paper, there's only so much damage you can do and you can have a whole lot of fun with it. 
Thank you so much for joining us with our fairy tale STEM challenge. We hope to see you again next week where we will be doing Rapunzel. We'll see you there.